Hey, Honors Chemistry, we're back again. We're on page uh, 534 today, Energy Diagrams. Let's go ahead and do what they ask us to in the book. Let's take sample problem A and draw it like this. We're going to put that graph like this. This time it levels out like this. This is energy. And this is the, uh, what did I call it? The course of the reaction. Now, what is it asking for? It says, label the reactants and the products. That's how much energy the reactants have. That's how much energy the products have. Then it says, tell them what delta E is. Well, let's see. The reactants are at zero. And the products, if you run across, you're going to see that they're around 50. So delta E is always the difference from here to there, from the reactants to the products. And so we're just going to go over here and draw it like this. Yep. Delta E, change in energy, it's uphill. And if it's going uphill like that, it's going to be positive. And so we're going to go ahead and oh, we always do products minus reactants. What's 50 minus zero? Fifty. So that's the change in energy. Then they want uh, E A prime, E A and E A prime. So E A is the activation energy. So how much energy do we need to get from here up to here? Well, we need this much activation energy. Okay, now we're not going to do EA prime yet. Uh, delta E forward, delta E forward is positive 50. Now we're going to go ahead and do delta E backwards. We're going to run this whole equation backwards. By the way, let me go ahead and tell you that the overall change in energy in this reaction is endothermal. because that's positive from the reactants to the products. Now let's go ahead and change it and go backwards to where this is the reactants. And this becomes the products. We gotta go from the energy level of the reactants up to the top of the activated complex, which is this much. So that is my Activation energy prime, prime meaning going backwards. And then um, what is the change in energy? Well, it's always products minus reactants. So it's going to be zero. We're going to call that delta E prime. We're going to say that that is zero uh, minus 50. From down here at zero, going up this high right here at 50. And so zero minus 50 is negative 50 kilojoules per mole. And that's exothermic. So when we run this equation backwards, the product, the reactants have more energy than the products do. Run backwards, you know. You got to make that sound. Okay, now is there a number up here at the top of this thing? What number is that up? What number is this up here on the graph? Is that about 80? 
So what's the activation energy going forward? It's always going to be pointing upward. You're taking it in. It's going to be a positive value. So it's 80 minus zero. And what is the activation energy in reverse? The activation energy in reverse, the prime, is going to be products. Ha oh, ha ha. No. We just need to get it from where the reactants are to up, up to the activated complex. And so that'll be the activation energy. It starts out at 50 and it goes up to 80. 80 minus 50 is 30. And if you take a look at sample problem A, I think I got them all right. Positive 50, negative 50. And it says, 80 kilojoules, 30 kilojoules per mole. 80 kilojoules per mole, 30 kilojoules per mole. That's change in energy. This is activation energy. These are the reactants. Those are the products. But when we do it in reverse, those are the reactants. These are the products. OK, and then they ask you some practice problems on page 535 done the same way. Go over to page 533 now. On 533, I'm going to talk to you about this goofy looking equation. I don't know if you remember when we talked about multi step reactions. We talk about reaction mechanisms, I think is what we called it. And we talked about things called intermediates. And if we take a look at the graph on the bottom of 533, Bottom right hand corner graph. We got three activated complexes. You got energy coming up this way. And it's starting, it looks like down here. And it's going up. This is the activation energy for the first stage. It's coming down. Then it's going up again. It's coming down a little further. Then it's going way up here. And then it's coming down further down than it was before. So the change in energy overall is the difference between the reactants and the products. And I think that this right here would be called delta E. Overall change in energy. And it looks like that delta E is downhill. It's going to be negative. Negative something. exothermic overall because it's always products minus reactants and so therefore this is a smaller number on the energy spectrum and it's a small number minus a bigger number and it's going to give me a negative value exothermic overall okay so what's going on here well, I don't know if you remember this, but we were talking about reactants are hydrogen and iodine. And why don't we just take a look at this on page 530. You see in the middle of page 530, they give you two particular possible reaction mechanisms. One of them has two steps. The other one has three. Well, this one has three. Let's go back to page 533. And if you take a close look at that graph, you see that H2 plus I2 is becoming H2 plus 2I. Right here. So H2 plus I2 is becoming reversible. Uh, H2 and two of these I's. 
right here. They call it two eyes. I like to call it I and I. And so when they, what's happening initially is you're breaking this bond right there. And you're forming these two. Now you're going to go ahead on the second stage. And by the way, in order to do this, you need this kind of activation. That's EA1. And this is going to be EA2. And this is going to be EA3. Because we're going to take this stuff right here. We're going to make it into H2I and an extra I. We're going to take that on the third stage and we're going to break the H's apart. And so you're going to get a huge activation energy to break those H's apart. And it's going to form two HI. You break the twos apart. And it requires a big activation energy. And you combine it with this one. And you combine it with that one. So one of the H's goes over here and hooks onto that. You could call it H plus H plus I plus I forms two HI molecules. And when they do that, it releases a lot of energy. Once you've activated it, it keeps going down like this, it releases all kinds of energy. And as a result, from the place where it started to the place where it finished, overall, it's exothermal. In the forward direction. Now, you want to go back in the reverse direction? Nah, you don't want to mess with that. That's page 533. See ya.